Firstly, what do you expect from COP21 in your practice? Well, I hope COP21 will kind of raise urgency and uh, acknowledge how small-scale kind of projects play a crucial part. Uh, so that this urgency filters through to, to projects like we've seen today, which are quite small-scale, but uh, you know, gain mass through networking. What forms of collaborative civic resilience do you develop in your projects? I think there are several. One is kind of uh, social, uh, so trying to kind of find economies of sharing and collaborative projects. Uh, uh, energy resilience, looking into kind of locally produced energy cycles, um, food resilience, but they all seem to work together. Uh, yeah, they're not uh, individual, separate from each other. And how initiatives such as the Arabian Charter can help enhancing collaborative civic resilience? Um, I think on many levels. As a practitioner, it, uh, it's the network, of course, that you're not alone, uh, which is quite overwhelming. Um, and in terms of uh, civic resilience, they, they create very important precedents which you can use in arguing uh, similar projects. So if you have the support of a bigger network, it's easier to uh, affect also change on the ground. And to work together. And to work together, of course. Thank you so much. What do you expect about the COP21 in your practice? I don't expect very much because the radical changes the, of, in our way of life, of consumption, of production are not going to happen from this conference. What's needed to stop climate change is a type of a local revolution, especially in the northern wealthy world, to transfer knowledge, technology, and to respect the planet. I don't think that's going to happen, but at least maybe more and more people will start waking up. Uh, second question, what forms of collaborative civic resilience do you develop in your projects? My project is not any concrete um, one local, but it's about making a network of resistance on a European level, presenting them to the institutions, to the European Parliament, at the United Nations, sharing collaborative experiences where people can have best practices, get together, form a common resistance. This is, this is concrete. This is, well, whatever. How initiatives such as the Urban Charter can help enhancing collaborative civic resi resilience? What we need on local levels is a legal framework that facilitates people taking that lot together, the urban agriculture, the co-housing, and not to have all these problems. On the contrary, what we need is the state to help instead of being a barrier like it is today. And we need financing that is not just as it is today that the vast majority of state financing goes to the big guys, the giant projects, the high-speed trains, the big oil pipeline. But we need that to be strengthening what I call the localization. These infinite number of small projects that people, where the relationship of people with community is more important than anything else. Thank you so much. You. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. What do you expect from the COP21 in your practice? To be quite honest, I, I'm not expecting a huge amount from COP21 which will directly impact on my practice. What I'm hoping for is that COP21 will once again raise awareness of the issue of climate change and how people at a, at a local level need to react to it. Okay. What forms of collaborative civic resilience do you develop in your projects? The most important form of, in fact, I don't even like the word resilience, it's resistance. It's, it's really about trying to bring different actors together because I really do think that one of the key, if you like, actions that's needed on the ground is to bring different players together with different kind of impulses in order to create a more organic, if you find, response to the challenges we face. And how initiatives such as the Urban Charter can help enhancing collaborative civic resistance? Absolutely. I mean, ultimately, we know that it is not our governments that will save us. It's going to be local action that will save us. So initiatives like Ruban, which are really fundamental in the way of working to bring into play a connection between climate change and social justice, 
and at the same time create an environment of producing a healthier lifestyle. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, go on. Hi, I'm Irana Bauman. I'm an architect from England, but I'm also a professor at Sheffield School of Architecture. And I'd like to answer the three questions that you've posed. So the first question in terms of what I would hope uh, COP21 will help to change my practice. Uh, I hope that all of the discussions we are having here will start moving us from being a marginal conversation to being a mainstream conversation. And that will allow some of our practice to become mainstream. In terms of forms of collaborative civic resilience, uh, as an architect, I'm quite often brought in as a broker. So, uh, architects have a very interesting position because quite often we are not the actual community activists, but we are brokers. So, for example, at the moment I'm just starting to work with four uh, small towns in England, mining towns, to develop a new uh, bottom-up uh, strategy for the future, regeneration strategy. And we are going to be working with a lot of ideas which have been discussing here, here. But what are the forms of civic resilience? So I see uh, my practice very much as a, as a capitalist, as a broker, bringing ideas from outside and working with local people to see whether they can be applied to our condition. And in terms of uh, how can Reb and Charter help, it's exactly how it can help. Because it, it, it creates a clear statement from which other people can start growing their own initiatives. So I'm very, very pleased to be here. Okay. Thank you very much. What's your name? My name is Renata Tischer from the University of Sheffield. Okay. What do you expect about COP21 in your practice? What do I expect from COP21? Yeah. Um, what I hope for is an agreement that is legally binding, so that would be more like a protocol. But I, as I understand it, they're hoping for a Paris Accord. Um, and what I hope for in terms of practice.